Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. December 2nd, uh, we're here for our Transportation and Commerce Committee hearing. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Vaquero. Present. Alderman Navarro. Present. Alderman Middlebrook. Present. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderwoman Evans. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Present. Chairman Cohn. Present. Seven present, you have four. Great, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, I will uh, entertain a motion on the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. I will make the motion we approve the minutes. Uh, 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 what, 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 what's the date of the last meeting? Um, October 19th. October 19th. So I, I move that we uh, approve those minutes from the October 19th meeting. Second. Madam Clerk, will you please uh, call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Vicoro. Aye. Alderman Navarro. Oh, the woman, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you say Navarro? I'm sorry, you cut yeah. out. I did, I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. All oh, the woman, Middlebrook. Aye. That's, no, it was me, aye. All the woman, Narayan. Aye. All the woman, Evans. All the woman, Schweitzer. Aye. Chairman Cohn. Aye. Seven aye votes. Great, thank you. With that, we uh, sustain the motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Um, we'll go ahead and take up our new business. Uh, I know that we have two board bills before us this morning, uh, one of which is board bill 129. So we'll go ahead and get that uh, started now. Um, sorry, I'm kind of navigating through here real quick. Um, so, is the airport director on the line? I am. Hi. Good afternoon, Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, Board Bill 129. I'm going to have Rob Salerano present for us. Great. Hey, Rob. Good afternoon, Alderman, Alderwoman. Uh, I may, we're requesting your approval of Board Bill 129, which is a memorandum of agreement between the city of St. Louis and the airport and the United States Customs and Border Patrol Agency. Um, and that is for the operation of our federal inspection FIS facility at the airport, which is located in Terminal 2. Under the terms of this MOA, we will, the airport will reimburse the Customs and Border Protection Agency for certain costs associated with upgrade and ongoing maintenance costs of new IT equipment that needs to be installed. Uh, this is an agreement that's typical of airports, and this is was put before us by the uh, Customs and Border Protection Agency in August. Um, <laughs> this will start in July of next year. And you'll notice that there's a larger bill or, billable amount in the first year reimbursed that will reimburse. And that is tied to the actual purchase of the equipment. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is just to stress the sensitivity of the time, timing of the agreement. Uh, we've been, informed by the Customs and Border Protection Agency that the CSO document that's attached, the cost sign-off document, is only good until the middle of January 2022. And so we want to, you know, get these prices now while we can lock them in. And so we're asking, I know, that uh, we move through this pretty quickly and we appreciate it. If I may, Chairman, I'll make one additional sure. comment on behalf. I think, you know, unlike most uh, of our uh, partners out here, this is a governmental entity that does all of the clearance uh, for our international arrivals. And they dictate uh, how they operate. And one of their modes of operation is that they don't pay for the space and for the equipment they use. We provide that for them. So we, we have had the benefit of uh, the past few years, actually, of not seeing some of this money 
be required for us. Um, and as they looked into a new system to get uh, a more state-of-the-art clearance and what they need to, to process all of the passengers coming in, it became very apparent that there was going to be some additional costs. So uh, as Rob said, this is standard across the system for them. This is not something that we can push back on and say, we're not going to pay this if we want them to operate here and clear our international flights, we have to have them. So it's um, it's one of those necessities. So thank you for considering. Yeah, thank you for the uh, additional information. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take questions from the committee. Uh, I'll start with Alderman Boyd. It's just kind of hard for me to vote against anything that uh, the airport director asked us to vote for. She's so exceptional in what she do. So I don't have many questions today. So today is her lucky day. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. Thank you kindly, sir. <laughs> uh, Alderman Vaccaro. Being Christmas, I, ha I have no questions about this. What a gift. Uh, Alderwoman Navarro. I have no questions either. Thank you very much. Alderwoman Middlebrook. I have no questions, thank you. Alderman Narayan. Uh, thank you, Chairman Cohn. Uh, just one question, just so I understand what's happening here. I've been reading through it. So this happens at uh, an agreement like this is in place at every airport where there are international arrivals then? Yes, that, that's correct. So the we for us to have uh, our international flights, we obviously have to have customs, borders, and protection. Unlike most other entities that we work with, their presence here uh, is dependent upon us employing them and paying for their space here. So uh, this MOU, we have older dated equipment in our facility uh, as we move toward hopefully more international flights. And, and certainly we, we see a lot of the Caribbean markets coming back right now. It's time for them to really upgrade the equipment. So this is coming our way with this kind of one-time initial purchase cost here and then the ongoing annual maintenance. But yes, it's a standard agreement across all FISs uh, with airports in the country. Okay, so if if for whatever bizarre reason, and I'm not inclined to vote against this or anything, but if, if the Board of Aldermen was to say no to this, then we just would the airport would no longer be able to take in international arrivals? That's correct. Okay. Totally understood. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, answering my questions. <laughs> they, they are, they are, I will tell you, they're, in my opinion, the most difficult agency within the government to work with, but uh, <laughs> we uh, need them, so. Totally understood. Uh, and thank you for your time. And that's all I have today. Thank you. Great. Uh, Alderwoman Evans. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Thank you so much. Uh, I have just a few questions. So it says this is a five year thing. Is this 537,000 roughly what it was last time as well? Or is it, has it gone up significantly or is it just about the same? I, I can tell you that this is the first time that we've had this document because we're, this is an upgrade for us of equipment. As I said, the, the, the equipment is older. And so it's the first time they've come to us with this kind of an upgrade. Okay, so this is this is an, this isn't like an every five years we do this kind of thing. No. This is a this is happening and it'll be paid over the course of five years. Got it. Um, how much would you just out of curiosity expect for international flights to be bringing into St. Louis in terms of money? I mean, over that five year period. In terms of money. Yeah. So, like, there's of, or, yeah, either one. That's you know if. We gauge revenue on a number of ways. So you get the landed weight as one revenue source. So the landed weight of an airplane that lands. So if we look like right now, we've got probably between the Cancun, the Cabo Montego Bay, uh, I don't know, we probably have 10 to 12 international arrivals a week that will really start picking up as we get into the March uh, segment because it was spring break they start adding a lot of the more of the caribbean destinations so we'll see the apple charters operate so you get one source of revenue from the landed weight if you take a look at the most of the airplanes that's coming in uh, on the landed weight that's probably a 
about $1,200 an airplane on, for every landing on that. And then there is also an international arrival head fee that they pay per passenger. And I believe that's two fifty right now, Rob. Are you, do you know for certain? I think it's. I don't know right offhand, but I can check in just momentarily. Yeah, I, I think that's two fifty for per per person. So for every passenger that comes into the international arrival area, there is a head tax on that. It is four eighty five currently. Okay, four eighty five per <laughs> plane passenger. Okay. How many people are generally on those on um, planes? About 120. Okay. Yeah, so that gets made up pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Okay, uh, that's it uh, in terms of uh, questions from the committee, unless there's uh, any additional questions that come up. I'm trying to look for any hands. Uh, I don't see any. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there anyone who, from the public, that is registered to testify or ask, make a statement? I don't think so. Let me pull it up. I don't see anybody when I look. I don't see anyone either, but. No speakers. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, you know, I will, I guess, uh, Robert, if I'm not sure if uh, you or uh, Rhonda might be able to answer this, but with the upgrade in equipment, is that just for customs or is that also for TSA? No, it's just, it's purely customs border protection, totally two different entities. Chairman. Right. So, yeah, the, this is, this is only dedicated to the FIS facility where they operate. So, TSA okay. So the equipment that they're upgrading, I'm just, I'm asking because I did just recently travel internationally. And so I'm trying to kind of uh, understand what equipment, because with customs, they, uh, it was actually pretty quick coming in uh, to Miami. They were just able to scan our passports and we didn't have to fill out the paper declaration form like I've had to do in the past. Is, are we kind of moving to a similar model here in St. Louis then? Yes, we, we have that today. It's just, this is an upgrade of the phone system and all the connectivity they have. They <laughs> clear most all of the passenger names before that flight ever lands. So when, when you, wherever your point of entry is, that information goes into a database. So here on a local basis, if you're coming in arriving internationally from a, from a nonstop international flight and you're being cleared here, they go through all of those on a daily basis and really look at those um, passenger records beforehand to, to deem whether or not there are individuals that they need to speak to. Uh, so that process, again, it's, it's connectivity process. It's an upgrade of the, the cable down there. It's an upgrade of the phone system and all of the things necessary for that. From a physical standpoint, you won't see it, but from a processing okay. standpoint. All right, understood. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. If there's no other questions from the committee, I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 129. I move to pass Board Bill 129 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. And I'll second. second. Uh, in previous role. Okay, so it's been a uh, motion by the alderman from the 22nd, second by the alderman from the 23rd. There's been a request for previous role. Is there any objection to previous role? Hearing no objection to previous rule, board bill number 129 passes out with a due pass recommendation. Um, thank you, everyone. And uh, Rhonda and Robert, just for your information, I, I have uh, some knowledge that we're probably going to have an additional meeting next week. Um, I'm, I have not yet confirmed that. So uh, it looks like we will be able to pass this out one way or the other before the end of the month. So thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. So, but I'll, I'll keep you posted as we work through that process. So uh, next on the agenda, we have board bill number 128, which is sponsored by, I believe, Alderman Gunther and Alderwoman Martin. Are either one of them here? I'm here. Hello, Alderman Gunther. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairman Shane Cohen. <laughs> uh, would you like to present board bill number 128 to the committee? Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, thank you Chairman Cohen and members of the Transportation and Commerce Committee for hearing board bill 128 today. 
Uh, Board Bill 128, uh, it authorizes an amendment to Ordinance uh, 67300. Uh, which is a lease agreement between the city of St. Louis and SI Warehousing, also known as Archway Fleet and Harbor Services. Uh, it extends, there's basically five parcels of, of uh, mooring rights along the river um, that are between the 7th Ward, uh, the 9th Ward, and the 11th Ward. Um, so I am uh, carrying this on behalf of uh, the two other of my colleagues as well. Um, like the bill says, I have uh, Alderwoman from the 11th as a co-sponsor. Uh, the Alderman from the 7th uh, was not able to put his name on it uh, because of his uh, professional work uh, having uh, this as a client. So that's why he kept his name off of it. But um, so I wanted to make sure that was clear. So essentially, uh, we have five parcels uh, between those three wards um, that we are extending a, a lease agreement with. Um, the parcels of land are between the MacArthur Bridge to the north and Iron Street all the way down to the south. Uh, we're extending their lease for a period of 10 years, um, but then also uh, giving them three uh, five-year options uh, for extending the lease as well. Um, I have uh, Mr. Ray on the line here uh, to be able to answer uh, specifics about the lease. Um, but one of the things that um, I was excited to see, which I'm sure everyone will be, is that uh, SI Warehousing currently has the lease on these properties where they're paying uh, $65,718 a year. Uh, we are extending that to uh, collect $255,300 a year on, the, on these properties, uh, as well as putting in a 2% annual escalator on top of the $255,000 lease. So, um, so it's just an extension of mooring rights on these properties. And I will, if it's uh, okay with the chairman, I will let uh, Mr. Ray uh, speak a little bit about the terms. Sure. All right, Mr. Ray. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Tom Ray. I'm with the law firm of Armstrong Teasdale and I represent the Port Authority. Let me um, explain this a little bit I, I, I want to correct a couple of things that the alderman <clears throat> misspoke about. This is a little confusing in that there are five parcels in an existing lease that started in 2007 that went to 2017. There was the first mutual extension of five years with the same parcels and the rent was bumped up a little bit as you do on your base rent. There was an ordinance passed that allowed negotiations at intervals, five year intervals. And what we did was renegotiate this lease uh, at that interval, which is in 2022 and January, 2022, that it comes due. And it's gonna go to, as the alderman said, 255. It is the second mutual option. So we're going from 15 to 20 years. There's one mutual option left from 20 to 25 years. So it's the first amendment because we bumped a rent and we added a parcel of a, a thousand square feet. I'm sorry, a thousand linear feet, uh, which in, in this lease is with the five parcels is spread throughout those wards, as he said, but they're not all contiguous because there's private property in between. So the lessee made agreements with some of the private let's see, uh, landowners to lease spaces there so he could use their spaces to make it somewhat contiguous. He was hanging over in our 1,000 square feet in the sixth parcel. So we added that to this lease. And that's how you get $60 by linear foot, which is the current rate times the number of linear feet gives you the 255,000. So if I didn't confuse you Okay, I, I will entertain questions from the committee. I'll start with Alderman Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, Tom, just to make sure I'm clear, um, this, is an, this is basically an extension of an additional still... five years. I'm sorry. Yes, it is the second okay. of initial renewal. The second renewal. The second renewal. How many renewals do they have on the lease? They have 
they, they have an original 10 year lease with three fives, which makes up the maximum of 25 years. We are in the second renewal and there is one to go. You're in the second renewal and there's one to go? There's one left. So how, what's the total again? I thought I heard you say 35. 25, the okay, maximum 25. under the charter is 25 years. Okay. And so this lease runs from January 17, 2022, to January 16, 2027. And we're moving from 65,000 to 200 some thousand, right? Correct, yes. And then at the expiration of this lease, uh, basically starting January the 17, 2027, we can renegotiate again for the, last, for the last time. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, Wow. You know, I'd have to say, Tom, I think I've, 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 you've been on several of these in the past couple of years. I am impressed with how we have gone from a small amount to almost five times the amount in the renegotiated term. Um, that is truly impressive to me. So I want to say just kudos to whoever's doing the negotiations on behalf of the city of St. Louis. Um, it seems like um, the really rich good times are, are coming to an end and the city of St. Louis is finally starting to get the fair share that we really truly deserve. So I want to compliment the good work of all the partners that have put this together. And I will certainly be voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Vaccaro. Um, not, nothing on the bill. Um, the, the, the bill sounds good. Just curious, Tom, is there, because all the new people on the uh, committee, is there any thoughts to do like we did a couple of years ago where we took the boat up and down and looked at the different sites so everyone knew, you know, what we were talking about when we were talking about these different things along the riverfront? I have not had that, Alderman. I have heard those uh, conversations over at the port, but... Uh, I remember the last time uh, you were on that boat, uh, right. your wife, and I, that's been a couple of years ago, if not longer. Uh, so they should be due. I'll mention that to the port director. No, we don't. I mean, even like that, I think we paid thirty-five bucks or whatever it was, but it was it was it was worth it to kind of have a better understanding <clears throat> of you know what went on up and down and you know the different things that are going on, but I'm, I'm just asking, but I'm fine with the bill. Thank you. Okay. I, I actually did work with Susan Taylor on arranging a trip for the members of the committee when I first became chair of the committee uh, that took place probably within the first three months. Um, so you did receive an email about that, Alderman, um, yeah. but I'm happy to, I'm, I'm happy to work with Susan again on arranging another opportunity to do so, because I do think it's important for our committee to understand um, you know, the intricacies and, and various city properties and, and whatnot that we're uh, discussing here in the, in the committee. So I'll, uh, obviously it's probably a little too cold to do that right now, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll work with Susan to see if there's something come springtime that we can work on together. Okay, thank you. And I, I must've missed it. I'm sorry, but thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, uh, Alderwoman Middlebrook who I believe was on that tour as well <laughs> earlier this year. I have no questions, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Alderman Narayan. Uh, no questions, thank you. Uh, Alderwoman Evans. Okay, Alderwoman Schweitzer. No questions, thanks. Who I think was also on the tour, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, if there's no other, Questions, is there anyone Chair, here? Chairman, I think Madam you skipped over me. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, Alderwoman Navarro. No problem, thank you. Um, I, I have a question and it's more a, a general question and maybe it's really a question for the Port Authority, but as we look at these leases up and down the riverfront and I'm just thinking about long-term for St. Louis, is there anything in these leases that contemplates the effects of climate change, flooding, increased precipitation? Um, I, I think this is something as a city that we need to be really looking out um, for for the, the long-term and it seems like these lease agreements come up and 
um, just wondering if there's a big picture vision here with what we know is is already here and coming with climate change. Is there is there any is that addressed in, in any sort of way in these lease agreements? Um, Alderwoman, the the current leases are being redrafted to in, include some of the terms of the standard provisions, which actually predate you. Uh, they go way back into the seventies, but um, and were used exclusively. And there was some language about hazardous waste and things of that sort, but they were never brought up to the future. What we're trying to do is bring them up uh, currently, but there is not to my knowledge, anything um, directly on point with that. But I, I will mention that to the port director as soon as we uh, complete here today. Great. Thank you. I mean, I even just, you know, the, I think the, the liabilities are in, in, are increasing for sure with um, with increased precipitation and, and flooding. And um, yeah, I, I think there's a bigger conversation to be had here in general. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. I think that's an excellent point. Um, Tom, if you could also just make sure if you are having those conversations, I'd like to be a part of those with uh, Director Taylor too. I'll mention it to her, uh, Alderman Cole. What I'm going to do is send her an email right after because she's tied up right now. Sure. I'm sure this afternoon. Okay. Uh, thank you. Madam Clerk, is there anyone uh, signed up to testify or speak? No, sir. Okay. I, I will entertain a motion. This is Jeff, Jeff, this is Jeff. Jeff. Yes, sir. Follow up. Yeah, Alderman Boyd. Alderman Boyd. I just heard listed on the attachment. It's incorrect. It shows Dion Flowers as a city register and uh, should reflect the new register um, and her name escapes me right now for some reason. Uh, Emma Boykins. Boykins. <laughs> for Sims. I'll uh, take care of that, Alderman. Thank you very much. So, yeah, so that should be updated. Thank you. Great call out. Thank you, Alderman Boyd. Welcome. All right. Uh, with that uh, friendly amendment, uh, I'll entertain a motion on board bill number 128. So moved. Uh, second. In previous role. It's been moved by the alderman from the 23rd, seconded by the alderman from the 22nd. Uh, there's been a request for pre previous role. Is there any objection to previous role? Okay, hearing no objection to previous role, board bill number 128 passes out with a due pass recommendation from the committee. Um, that is all that we had on our agenda for uh, this afternoon. I really appreciate everyone's time. Um, I don't currently have another committee meeting scheduled for transportation and commerce, but um, we'll follow up with the individual committee members with respect to the item I've brought up, one being the um, kind of environmental clauses and the Port Authority leases, and then also um, scheduling a, another tour of our uh, riverfront and facilities, Port Authority facilities uh, for the committee come springtime. So um, any other questions or general conversation before we adjourn? No? All right, with that, uh, Transportation and Commerce Committee is adjourned for the afternoon. Thanks everyone for your time. <laughs>